Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today it's a little colorful art journaling. Now this art journal page, it started with some gel printing. Now I know a lot of different gel printing techniques and you'll never believe which one I chose to use for this page. And there's actually a reason why I chose that one, but it might not be what you think. Of all the possible things that I can do with a gel plate, I am gonna do one of the simplest things with it here. I'm just gonna put a little bit of paint on there, put a stencil down, and then just slap that gel plate on there. Now it does help if you put a little more paint on there than what I did, so I'm actually gonna bring out the tube of paint and not just grab the remnants there off my palette. Once I've got a little more paint on there, it definitely covers more of the page, but I'm gonna do the same kind of thing. I'm just gonna press it down and then put it somewhere else. Now what I've got here, this is not something that I would frame right now. This is by no means something amazing. This is simply a background. I'm using that plate, I'm putting paint on it, and then putting it onto the journal. It really is that simple. It doesn't have to be any harder than that. Put paint on it and then just slap it into that journal. For the next layer, I'm gonna add some color. Now, why did I choose this color? Well, because it's what was left over on my palette over there, and I'm gonna use up a bunch of those paints when I'm making this page. And what is that fancy tool that I'm using to apply the paint? Well, that's a good old cosmetic sponge. One of those wedge sponges, they come in the bulk packs in the cheap section of the drugstore. Yep, that's what I'm using there. When it comes to applying paint to an art journal page, there are thousands of ways that you can apply that paint. And some of them are breathtaking, amazing results. And guess what? I'm not doing that today. I'm sticking with the simple thing. So why on earth, with all the techniques that I know, using gel plates, using paint, using stencils, why am I not using all of them? Why am I not doing the most complex techniques to get the most wow and amazing things to happen on the page? Well, for one very big reason. Overthinking things takes the fun out of it. It sucks the joy out of play if I spend a lot of time really thinking about what would be the right technique, what would be the perfect way to apply the paint, what would be the ideal place to put this stencil. And so that's why I'm not doing it today because I don't feel like it and I just want to play and have fun in my art journal. But the pull to think about things, it can be very strong. And there is a point later in this art journal page where I do a whole lot of thinking and it really gets in my way. But we'll get to that in a little bit. By the way, what can you do if you put too much paint on your gel plate? Now I've slowed this down so you can get this very complicated and challenging technique. And that is simply you grab some of the paint with your finger and set it over on the palette so you can use it on another print. And I completely forgot to mention, the stencils that I'm using, these are part of the ATC mix-up series from Stencil Girl Products. And what that is, is ATC size stencils all on one big one. So on a large stencil, you actually get nine designs. The way that you're seeing me use them here in this art journal page is just using it one at a time. But you can actually repeat some of these patterns and fill any size space that you want. So even though they're little, they can actually cover a very large area. Now the circle stencil that you're seeing me use right here, this one is probably the most versatile of the entire set because you can build customized patterns. You can actually make each one unique using the same stencil. And I show you how to use this stencil to do that in a video that goes into depth about how to make patterns with these, how to make repeating patterns, and how to make stencils that look like they shouldn't repeat, look like they are repeating. But all that stuff for you is in the video where I dive into playing with these stencils, how to cut them apart, all that kind of stuff. It'll have a link down below for you. Two of the designs come with the mask, basically the inside part of it, as well as the stencil part. And here, what I'm doing is auditioning using the mask. Do I like how they look there? I did, so I know that if I stencil it there, it's gonna make me very happy. And this way, I don't have to spend a lot of time thinking. When I've got that mask, I can actually test it out before I commit. Now, not only have I created some ATC mix-up stencils, lots of other artists have too over at Stencil Girl. And Mary Beth Shaw is the one who started it. And this is one of hers that I'm using here to get the numbers to go under these ladies. If you've ever stenciled something and you want it to pop, an easy way, a quick way to do that is simply to outline it with something like a Stabilo pencil here. Now, everything I've done up to this point has been about not doing a lot of thinking. 
And this is the part where there was an incredible amount of thinking going into this page. We're talking like 20 minutes of thinking. You're not seeing it. I cut all that out because wow, was that going to be boring in there. What was happening is I wanted words to go on these ladies, but I didn't know what words that I wanted. So I grabbed a piece of book text and I scanned through it looking for just the right words. But this was kind of like going on a scavenger hunt without any idea what you're actually looking for. So I had to go through a lot of pages until I found the words that I wanted. And yes, I had no idea what words I wanted until I saw them. So what were these three words? Well, they were student, swami, and spitfire. Now these three ladies were world travelers and I decided to put some washi tape that had buildings and castles and that kind of stuff on it across the page, but I wanted it to go behind them. I didn't want it to just be put on top of them. The kind of thing I sort of wish I'd done on an earlier layer, but because I have the mask, I can do a little cheat here. I'm putting the washi tape on the mask where I want to line it up on the women on the page. And then I'm going to cut that washi tape to the exact shape that I need. That way, when I go and put it on the page, it will already be cut and trimmed to the curves on her. That way it'll look like I actually got it behind her or I planned this out or that kind of thing. When in fact, it was actually one of the top layers going on. And speaking of the washi tape, I do my very best when I put a video together for you to have the supplies linked over on the blog. And unfortunately, I have looked and looked and looked for where this washi tape might be available because I know there are other washi tape lovers out there like me and I cannot find it at all. By the way, what I'm using right there is simply a baby wipe to smear that Stabilo pencil. It reacts to water, so if you get it wet, it'll smear and blend and move around, which is really handy here when you want to make something stand out. As long as I've got that Stabilo pencil in my hand, I'm also going to add just a touch of scribbled journaling below the ladies, and that's going to finish off the page. Now, by the way, when I'm writing, when I'm scribbling, I am actually writing real words, but don't worry if you can't read them, because I can't read them either. Thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button, and that way you'll know as soon as I have a new video out. And what if you want more fun right now, say like a free workshop? Well then head on over to my website at acolorfuljourney.com where I've got permission to play a free workshop waiting for you. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.